G'day, my name's Sam Wainwright. I'm a member of Socialist Alliance, a councillor at the City of Fremantle, former Wharfie and disability support worker. I want to speak to you about the boom, training, 457 visa workers and migration in Australia. The recent news that Australia's first enterprise migration agreement had been signed between the Federal Government and Gina Reinhart's company, company of the world's richest woman, says a lot about politics and society in Australia, namely that our governments are subservient to big business and to mining big business in particular. But there are three important issues that need to be drawn out of this and explored in a bit more detail. First is, this, is the so-called skills crisis. Everywhere employers are saying they can't get enough skilled labour. But why is this? Down in Quinana, in Western Australia, 27% youth unemployment. Why aren't young people being trained, trained to fill these roles? Over the last three decades, Australia has failed to train people to perform these jobs. Training has been defunded, apprenticeship ratios have been removed from awards, and training wages have been kept pitifully low. No wonder we have a so-called skills crisis. Essentially, big business wants skilled labour, but doesn't want to have to pay for it. Instead, they'd rather poach that skilled labour from small business or from overseas. A case in point is stevedoring in Fremantle. The two major stevedoring companies, plus the Fremantle Port Authority, have not put on a single apprentice in over two decades. And these are operations with 24-hour, seven-day-a-week heavy engineering workshops, employing over a dozen fitters and electricians each. But even if we do all the training right, even if we restore the apprenticeship ratios, even if we make bosses pay for training, in all probability we're still going to need to bring in migrant labour to help do the job, especially in this boom that we're experiencing in the offshore oil and gas and mining industries in Western Australia and Queensland. And there's nothing wrong with that in and of itself. Australia was built by migrants. Migrants have become a vital part of our society, our culture and our union movement. The problem is not migrant labour. The problem is guest labour, a special category of labour in this case, in Australia, the 457 visa system, where you have a second class layer of workers who are dependent on the employer for their residency, who have no guaranteed path to residency, who can be kicked out of the country when the boss doesn't want them anymore. That's the problem. Remember, all the migrants that came to this country after the Second World War were given permanent residency with full citizenship rights. And that's how it should be today. Migrants are welcome but not a crappy guest labour scheme that enables them to be treated as second-class citizens, opens them up to super-exploitation and raises the danger of downward pressure being put on the wages and conditions of all Australian workers. That's the important thing. Restore training, full citizenship rights for migrants. Of course, in the meantime, there are already 457 visa holders in this country, and our response to that is important. It's very important that we don't blame the victim. Let's bear in mind, some of these workers come from countries that are much poorer than Australia. And even under the disadvantageous conditions of 457 visas, there's still jobs that they need often. So kicking them out of the country isn't going to solve anything. No, instead, what we need to do is to welcome them, organise them, join them to our unions, so that those workers cannot be used as a wedge against the wages and conditions of, of the rest of the workforce. And there are good examples where this has already taken place across Australia. Here in Western Australia, the Australian Manufacturing Workers Union has already joined up hundreds of workers, primarily Filipino welders and other, and other tradespeople, and joined them to their union, got them onto union EBAs, thereby completely negating any ability of the boss to use 457s as a wedge against the rest of the workforce. So in the short term, we need to organise and welcome 457 visa holders into our ranks and in the long term, restore training and give permanent residency to those migrant workers that do come and settle in this country.